happy Earth Day. I know Earth Day was yesterday, uh, but uh, today we're also celebrated. We can celebrate it all week. Um, I've been celebrating Earth Day since last week uh, when we had Dr. Dave. Um, we had him here so that he can talk about health, right? Because it's not just about a healthy planet. It's also about us being healthy first. So um, in the chat box, if you can introduce yourself. So hi, Iris, Helmet, Leticia, Katie, Haiti, Brett from San Diego. Hello, Brett. It's always nice to uh, see you. Uh, Darlan from Sandag. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, for those that are joining us who are not from San Diego, um, Ms. Darlan Momat is from Sandag, and she has been very helpful um, working with the cities um, and obviously the California Complete Count Committee. So thank you for being here, also supporting um, the work that every uh, that organizations are doing. Um, hi, Colleen. Thank you for joining us. Wow, we have Christina. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so if anybody would like to introduce themselves at this point, feel free to do so. So let's get started. Again, my name is Blanca Romero. I'm the Regional Census Campaign Manager for Naleo Educational Fund here in San Diego. Um, today we have Cristina Camacho on the line. Cristina, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, uh, yes, like she said, my name is Christina Camacho. I'm with Naleo Educational Fund. I'm the Regional Census Campaign Manager for the Central Valley. Um, I'm excited to talk a little bit about digital marketing and things that we can do as we are in this uh, stay-at-home order. Um, and our outreach efforts have been, um, um, have changed significantly. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to show you some resources and some talk to you about social media and some awesome things that we can do. Thank you, Christina. So again, um, we Naleo Educational Fund was established in 1981. Uh, it stands for the National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials. Uh, we are the 501c3 nonprofit organization that facilitates full Latino participation in the American political process from citizenship to public service. We also have our sub campaign, um, which focuses on making sure that we count our zero to five uh, young children. As a community, part of why we don't get counted is because we leave out uh, the zero to five children in our census campaign. So as we move through this work um, doing digital media, right, and Facebook Live, and everything that we have to do, um, <clears throat> it's important that we connect to the Ethernet. Um, when we don't connect to the Ethernet, where our video is going to be off, um, uh, just an Ethernet connection is more reliable. So please, please, if you are able to do that, if, if it's accessible to you, um, you can order an Ethernet cable and attempt to connect directly uh, from your modem to your computer, and this will improve your work. Um, last week, we also had Dr. Dave from the Adams Avenue Integrative Health. Health. If you were uh, present, you know that um, the message that he had for us is that in order for us to be well during this time, we have to sleep well, we have to move well, eat well, and then we also have to think well. Um, so thank you, Dr. Dave McCann, for being us with us last week. Um, so right now, I have a couple of questions from you to get started on our digital marketing workshop. So on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest and 10 being the highest, rate your knowledge of digital marketing. So just put it in the chat box on a scale from one to 10. And 10 being the highest, 10 being an, an expert. One would be, um, you don't know how to use a computer. So none of you should be a one. <clears throat> So we had a couple other people join us from Fresno, from Centro La Familia, from Karen Organization here in San Diego. Okay, so we have five, six, sevens, five, sevens, three, five, seven, six, seven, five, six. Awesome. Great. 
<clears throat> so this is basically, um, there's a wide range of digital marketing, right? And obviously hmm, I would rate myself maybe hmm, a six or a seven. Um, I think <clears throat> there are experts out there that know way more than me. All right, Ricardo Favela, you said you rated yourself a seven, eight. Kevin Sanchez rated yourself an eight. Um, list one type of digital marketing or anybody else as well. You can list any type of digital marketing. One type that you know of. So I'm waiting for those eights and sevens. Those who rated themselves Instagram is a type. Okay, let's see. So Instagram advertising, Facebook advertising advertising or maybe Instagram posting. <clears throat> so posting on social media, yes. We have IG, FB, Twitter, targeted social media ads. Thank you, Darlan. Yes, those would be types. Instagram email, paid online ads. boosted posts, text messaging. Okay, awesome, Reddit. Yes, so those are um, all different examples of different platforms that we can use. And we also have different examples of types. Okay, so true or false. Your digital marketing campaigns within your company supports your company goals. So think of your company goals and think of your digital marketing And true or false, your campaigns support your company goals. So for the most part so far, we have true. True, true, true. For the, po for the most part, we have true. And I, I think that might mean that um, we are either aware of it or also our organization has done, has to invested money in them. So I'm gonna start off just by talking about digital marketing. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, and many of you do know, you rated yourself very highly, um, right? So digital marketing refers to the component of marketing that utilizes the internet and online based digital technologies. That's basically it, right? So such as desktop, phones, and other digital media and digital platforms. Uh, the important here is that you are trying to promote a product or a service. And you can find a definition, you know, on Wikipedia. So I just, you can always go to Wikipedia and find out more information about any of these topics that I'm talking about. Um, they do a really good job of just everybody sharing their knowledge. So digital marketing campaigns, but it's a little comic uh, comic graphic. It says, we just have to amplify digital, experiential, transformational, social influencer engagement if we want to dot, dot, dot. Wait, what do we do again? So it's just funny um, to me because I thought, oh, it talks about all the uh, things we want to do digital, right? We want to have it be transformational, social influencer. Those are just words in the digital marketing word put to get, world put together uh, to make, you know, something. And so sometimes companies or ourselves or projects, you know, we can find ourselves knowing that we need to do uh, digital marketing, but we don't really know why or how. So I want you to think about and this can be at a personal level as well, right? It can be your projects, your hobbies, something that you're trying to lift off the ground on your own. It can also be your company, for example. So what is the role of digital marketing in your company? What do you think it is? You already said, some of you, that you think your company goals are aligned with digital marketing. So are you, are you these people, right? Are you the ones using these big words but don't really know what it is, right? Are you investing in it? Um, what is the role? 
basically your roles or should support your organizational uh, goals, right? So the, your digital marketing should support your organizational goals. Uh, most importantly, this is to raise an awareness of your brand or your company. So whatever service you're trying to provide the best nonprofit organization, right? Naleo Organizational Fund, the leading nonprofit, um, et cetera. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, this is gonna be made through your marketing, but in this case, it's digital. Um, also, if you're a business, um, you are talking about conversions, right? So when we're talking about digital marketing, um, we can see a conversion. So if we have leads, right, they're gonna convert into something, some sort of action. Um, if we are talking about, for example, businesses, right, they're going to convert, it's going to convert into a sale or a new partner if we're talking about organizations. So essentially, that is really the goal of your digital marketing uh, strategies, that you are raising awareness about your brand, and your brand is everything. Even if you're a nonprofit organization, your brand is everything. That's the single most that you have to take care of, the single most thing you have to take care of. And then obviously it's always nice to make sales, it's always nice to reach our goals. So I just want you to think of those things. Sometimes some organizations will say, I don't have a budget. Or hey, can you, Christina, can you do a video for me, but I only have $200 to pay you, right? Or um, I need a website, but I don't really know how much it costs. Or you know, that, that can be, questionable. But basically, your digital marketing is going to produce measurable results in proportion to the resources you commit to it. So um, if you spend a little bit of money, right, you're not going to get a huge return on your investment because you spend a little bit of money. I, wanna, I want to point us out, this is a difficult to read cartoon, but I'll read it. Um, I also thought it was funny. So the first box says, your job is digital transformation. It's not just about disruptive technology. We need a whole new way of thinking across the entire organization. This is one of our top priorities. We are all counting on you. So good luck on this summer internship. If you're a, if you're a digital marketer or if you've done digital marketing or social media, you're probably laughing because you know you've had to have an internship or you were paid very low because your organization, right? The organization you were working for um, did not have the money to pay you or did not want to invest in someone or a long-term position. So a lot of times some organizations will say, oh, well, we have a social media internship, right? You come and you volunteer, et cetera. Um, you're gonna get very little results, right? Like that's that's supposed to be a funny a funny joke. So the more resources you invest, you know, you should be able to have a greater return. You don't have to allocate, um, you know, too much. But I, I want to point out that when with digital marketing, right, you can harness both um, user generated sources to grow online communities, but also this helps you to minimize the financial investments you have to make. And I'll, I'll show you. One little thing, one little tip you can do later on to, to improve this. So most of the digital media tactics, if not all, are trackable. When we look at the history of traditional broadcast media, right? And here I have a little, um, I have a little uh, chart for you. We have traditional broadcast media, magazine ad buys, news, newspaper ad buys, and direct mail, which none of those are trackable. You do not know whether someone clicked on it, right? It's difficult to know whether it converted into a sale unless you say, how did you hear about us? So with digital media, you have SEO, online, online ads, social marketing, uh, and email marketing amongst some. They are all trackable. So one of the things to keep in mind, let's see, uh, for example, social media marketing. It's $1 per 1,000 people reached for example, right? That's a metric that you can track. Versus newspaper ad buys where you can pay 10,000 for a per page on a Sunday newspaper and you don't know who's actually gonna see them, right? You do not know your rate, uh, of, uh, rate of return. So one of the things, uh, one of the common tools are Google Analytics. 
Um, mostly every, any platform that you choose. So a platform would be like Facebook, Instagram, right? The platforms are the 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 um, the ones that we choose to use. They most likely have some sort of analytics within that um, within that site. So some of those are Google Analytics and YouTube Analytics. Um, at another time, we could dive in more into looking at YouTube analytics, for example, so that you can see um, what your uh, rate of viewing is, et cetera. Very simple analytics. So I'm just going to go real quick over some common digital marketing tactics. You mentioned some of them. Uh, here are the most common ones, right? We have search engine optimization, con content marketing, social media marketing, pay-per-click email marketing, and then also, also you need a marketing budget, and then you have mobile marketing. Um, what I want to talk about right now, what I want to talk about right now uh, specifically is reputation marketing. Um, have any of you heard of reputation marketing before? No, okay. So real quick, you know, when we think of reputation, we think of the way our organization, um, someone looks at us, right? Our organization, what is my reputation? What reputation am I trying to uphold? Um, it's the same thing as a brand or similar to a brand, right? What do people recognize me for? Um, this is something I have to take care of, right? If someone go, um, gives me um, uh, some sort of, says something bad about me and, you know, it, totally goes against my reputation, I'm going to want and address that immediately, right? Um, if reputation is something that we care for. And so, yes, this is also relative to organizations, right? What reputation does Naleo Educational Fund, for example, have, right? It's like, oh, they have a reputation maybe for always starting late, or maybe they have a reputation for always starting on time, or the reputation is that we offer um, great workshops. I hope that's a good reputation that we have. Um, so it's just the same way online. Okay, so the way people think about you is also the same way online. So if you're looking to improve your brand's image or even to just maintain it, right, uh, reputation marketing uh, can be helpful for you. It has evolved from reputation management, which is basically handling different crises, crises through, for example, public relations, and also brand marketing. So it's you're just branding, uh, marketing your brand. A brand's reputation is vetted online in real time by consumers leaving online reviews and citing experiences on social networking sites. So your reputation is basically how you come up online, what people are saying about you, the comments that they're saying to you. And with the popularity of social media, vetting has turned from word of mouth to the digital platform. As nonprofit organizations, we relied on lo a lot on the word of mouth, right, to spread the census message. We have planned to do, you know, phone banking, canvassing, many organizations. We relied on that word of mouth, word on, of mouth to spread the census uh, message. We can do the same via digital platforms. Digital platforms are just as strong as word of mouth. So forcing basically businesses to take active measures to stay comp competitive and profitable. So if you're a business, you've been forced. Some of you know that sometimes you may not like social media or you may not get it, but now you have been forced to move into that, that direction. And that's why I showed that little comic uh, beforehand, right? Because sometimes we don't, we know we have to do it if we want to stay competitive, but we don't know exactly why or how. So customer feedback or just feedback in general has become very popular, which is great, right? This is um, employee feedback, customer feedback, any type of feedback is golden because we know what the other individual wants. In terms of um, the digital world, we trust feedback from faceless individuals. When we go on Yelp, when we go on YouTube, uh, um, what do you call it, Google Maps, right? We look at the reviews. We do not know these individuals. We never met them, but we trust them. We trust what they have to say about an organization or a company um, or the comments or the ratings that they say. Um, if you're an employee, um, what is that website? Field Glass, I believe, or Glassdoor? 
um, I think believe it's glass, it's something glass, but it's a website where you can look and see the reviews that employees leave about their employers, about companies. Um, some people go and do that. So this feedback can be as customer reviews, right? It's a review that a customer left for you for, for your organization. It could also be an employee review, an employee that left a review for your organization. And then you can also have social responsibility reviews. These would be more from the company's um, initiative where let's say, for example, right now we're seeing it a lot. We're seeing a lot of organizations who are saying, hey, we are donating um, free internet to the schools or we are um, uh, paying our employees for uh, time off while we go through this virus, right? So those are social responsibility reviews. And so all of those can help um, your reputation of your or organization. So here we have an example of a faceless individual from whom we can possibly trust. So this is, you know, Miguel Martinez. Um, they left a five star and it says great place to get citizenship application assistance that's just an example right and then here we see the overall rating of an organization i will show you which organization that is in a moment so this organization it has a 4.0 star right and it has six reviews what are your immediate thoughts right like oh mm, i don't know it depends what you think of of your 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 reviews right usually we say well they only have six reviews right so it can't be that reliable but what if this organization had a 4.0 and 300 reviews that said you know that they were a great place for whatever reason 300 reviews versus six reviews i think that makes that would make the impression different from the people looking it up whether it be someone wanting to know what you do someone wanting to go and get a service for you if you're unsure, right? Maybe in this case, they're talking about citizenship. That can be a delicate matter. So you don't want to go to anyone that you think could be a scam, right? Um, if you're looking for other services as well, if you're an employee and you're trying to figure out, um, and it's glass door, if you're trying to figure out what the culture is inside or maybe what it looks like, what people think about it, right? You may or may not want to work there. If you're a funder, you may also be looking at this, right? So this is not too bad. So think about your organization and you can do this on your own too. What is your company's reputation? Um, and this is for anyone who is aware of your organization or interested, like I said. So what is your company's reputation? And you can do this simply by going to your Google Maps and putting in the name of your organization if you want to do that. You go to Google Maps, put in the name of your organization, and immediately what comes up, right? Um, in this case, the organization I was looking at was, of course, Naleo Educational Fund. So um, immediately we have one picture, right? I had to cut it off here just for <clears throat> slides purposes, but we have a great picture. I love it. It's not too bad. I would write. I would rate just that off the bat a 10, right? It's very trustworthy, nice people. Um, we have four stars, not bad. They haven't done anything too shady yet, right? Or at least no one has complained. But then they have six, six reviews only, um, six reviews. So if I were to give tips to our own um, uh, organizational reputation online, I would say we could definitely add more pictures, a lot more. And, you know, we could have maybe up to 10. There's only one right now. Um, I would say try to increase our review numbers. Um, and we will talk, um, there will be a specific deep dive on how to get this number to go up, different tips. Um, we can't do it right now because it would take a long time, but stay tuned for it where um, I, I can go more into it as to how you can increase your numbers here from six to higher um, and then, uh, hopefully a better rating if you already don't have one. So this is just a quick example of what reputation marketing and how you can compare, right? So you can do this same exercise for other sites like Yelp, any other place where you get reviewed, and this could include Glassdoor as well. 
Um, you can look at how you come up when, when people search you on Facebook, right? You can put, if you think you're the top civic engagement organization in, in say for example, Central Valley, right? Search top nonprofit organization and see who comes at the top. If it's not you, guess what? It's not you, <laughs> right? So these are just little tiny simple tips that you can start looking. And this again can be for your own website if it's a hobby, et cetera. So with that, um, I'm gonna move us forward with my colleague, Cristina Camacho. Cristina Camacho is the Regional Census Campaign Manager in the Central Valley, um, also for an Aleo Educational Fund. Let's talk a little bit about uh, social media. So, you know, a lot, many of the things that are going on with COVID-19 has uh, pushed a lot of our efforts to go digital. Um, so there are a lot of resources out there that um, can, you know, like help us out how um, we can still get the word out about the census, you know, um, in with our social media sites, right? So there is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, lots of social media sites that we can use. Um, Facebook, you know, maybe you can, um, with much of our outreach working shift, uh, work shifting to online and digital space, um, our presence on social media is crucial. So using Facebook Live, Instagram Live is an awesome thing to do, right? Um, so I would encourage people to, um, you know, we can't do big events, right? We can't, you know, um, get a crowd going or, you know, have people come to one location, you know, due to safety. Um, but we can do like virtual um, events, right? So we can create a flyer, you know, include the Facebook link and, you know, send that out to our uh, partners and our community members and encourage them to sign on um, on a Facebook Live. So you can host uh, digital conversations on um on Facebook, right? So you can encourage people to um, click on the link, go on your Facebook Live, and you can answer questions um, about the census. Um, I believe for April 1st, uh, we did that, and um, we had a lot of people um, asking questions like, you know, where do I, uh, how do I participate? I haven't received anything by mail. Um, we have to remember that, you know, a lot of uh, the operations from the U.S. Census Bureau have been um, have been uh, suspended, right, um, including update leave. So a lot of people have who normally like don't get mail. Uh, they have they have to get their information through update leave and that operation has been suspended. So. Um, if they haven't received anything, um, you know, you can tell them to that they can participate online or by phone and all they need is their physical address. Um, a PO box won't work. Um, they would need to provide some sort of physical address or maybe um, um, on the online option, they can provide uh, the city and cross street. Um, so that's one way that you can um, engage uh, your community is by um, hosting digital conversations and making sure that you tag friends and other organizations uh, that you can um, kind of join together and and um, and do these these events. Um, the Asian Pacific Labor Alliance came up with a great uh, uh, toolkit that you know includes all of these hyperlinks. So Facebook group posts, um, these are examples that you can use um, to get that reach, right? To get your um, your social media event going. And you, you can kind of look at those examples. We will be sharing um, these resources um, at, in, with a follow-up email. And um, it's really quite simple. You just, you know, like, get a, a poster going, send it out to partners, and encourage them to sign on to Facebook um, whenever you go live. Um, you will get uh, lots of comments and people asking about the census. And, you know, we do, Naleo um, Educational Fund also has a digital toolkit uh, that people can, can use for messaging, and they can also use to promote um, a lot of our um, uh, census materials such as our uh, 877 El Censo hotline. Um, so if people, if you can't answer those questions on your Facebook Live, uh, maybe you can encourage and promote our um, 
census hotline uh, where people can go ahead and give us a call and um, we will be able to answer those, uh, those questions. Um, we always remember to tag people. So if you um, have uh, another organization that you work closely with when it comes to census, um, when it comes to census work, you can go ahead and tag them and you know grab their audience as well. Um, so make sure you you tag friends and organizations. Um, so these are some ideas. You can host a census dance party, a virtual census rally, census and chill. Uh, posts on Instagram Live or IG um, story about taking the census and Twitter chats. So um, who here is familiar with a Twitter chat? Um, so just uh, you can just uh, go ahead and type it in the chat box. Have you guys heard of a Twitter chat? Perfect. Okay, so we got no. Okay. Twitter bomb. Okay. Yeah, okay, a lot of you haven't heard of these. So Naleo actually has done a few of these and what it is basically is you pick a date and time. Okay, definitely encourage you to use it. Uh, you pick a date and time where everyone will um, uh, either retweet, like, or um, share the uh, similar content at that exact date and time, right? So um, Naleo has done this with um, our April 1st um, National Census Day. We've done it um, a few times uh, during our uh, National Latinos uh, Week of Action. And basically what it is, you pick a date and time and you share similar content or retweet, like, and just get a conversation going on Twitter. And um, that has been very successful. Uh, people, um, you know, tend to like um, the more people that retweet and there's more engagement going on. Right. And so you're able to to reach a, a number of people uh, with important information. For example, um, we did get um, an extension with the um, to instead of October, August 14th, now we are at October 31st where um, the, the census has now been extended to. Um, so something like that is very important information that we must, you know, um, get everyone to, to retweet, like, and, you know, make people aware of. Um, definitely using hashtags, yes, Iris. Hashtags are very important always um, when you can. Um, I, we understand that Twitter, sometimes they have like a character limit, right? But use as many hashtags that relate to what you're posting about. So for example, um, if you're posting about the 2020 census, um, and maybe you use hashtag 2020 census. If you live in California, hashtag California for all. Um, if you are, if your post is uh, geared towards the Latino community, you can put something like, you know, our hashtags, Hágase Contar, um, hashtag Asme Contar, which focuses on our uh, young Latino children ages zero to five. So using hashtags is also a very great way to get engagement going, right, on social media. So yeah, like if you haven't um, done a Twitter chat, uh, just, you know, cre again, create a flyer, send it out to partners, send it out to community members, send it out to friends and family, um, to log on and to retweet and post similar um, uh, content um, that during that date and time, and you'll see how many impressions um, you can get, right? So that's that's pretty cool. Um, go ahead and uh, to see, check out uh, sample Facebook group posts. And this actually gives you a play by play. So if you go down, um, it'll tell you, you know, what wording messaging you should use. Okay. Um, so, you know, go to like, you can see like the messaging, the wording, you can use this and um, definitely like see ask questions and you can get them answered. Sorry, going a little fast. Okay. Um, share a census meme. So there's a lot of um, this toolkit uh, that was created by Asian Pacific Labor Alliance has a lot of great examples of how you can, um, you know, start a census group post, right? And it also shares a lot of like uh, um, 
examples that you can make your own, uh, such as, uh, you know, share a census meme, social distancing, a Zoom party with Facebook group. So there, it's got the messaging there. It's got the examples there. We will be sharing this toolkit um, with uh, during our follow-up email, but there's a lot of great um, examples you can use uh, to get the word out, right? Uh, census is still here, even though um, a lot of people are, are very much focused on COVID-19. We just want to encourage people to remember, hey, you know, when you're home, uh, you know, during the stay-at-home order, um, take the time to, you know, do your census. It's, it's simple. It's easy. You can go online by phone or by mail. And those, and, you know, you can use hashtag 2020, hashtag I count, you know, um, it, a lot of local areas have um, also created um, hash, their own local hashtags, right? Here in Kern County, it's hashtag Kern Counts. So, you know, just encouraging people to to get involved with a lot of these um, uh, resources. And again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. A lot of these resources have been created um, for us, and you know, we just have to help uh, share and. Um, and continue to uh, get that engagement going on um, in social media. The Instagram story challenge. So this one's very interesting. So if you guys have Instagram, you know that there are, um, right now there's a lot of um, ways that you can get people involved. So the, um, the Asian Pacific Labor Alliance came up with this graphic where um, you people can just share on their Instagram story and they can say, you know, they can answer this question, did you take the census yet? And then they can tag people such as, you know, like, for example, if I, I post it on my Instagram, I can tag Blanca, I can tag, um, you know, two of my other friends to see if they've uh, taken the census. And then they can uh, challenge somebody else uh, and ask the same question, did you take the census? So this is, uh, I know that on Instagram, there's been a few where, uh, they go around, but they're asking like personal questions, kind of like, oh, you know, what is your favorite uh, food or what's your favorite drink? Um, and these are being posted on Instagram and they tag people and those people have to post that on their Instagram story with their favorite drink, their favorite um, meal. And so um, this is the way that um, APALA um, came up with a, a simple graphic to encourage people to take the census. And they just tag three people, and um, those three people are then nominated to uh, take the census, um, and then they have to share it to three other people, encouraging them to take the census. So this is a pretty cool graphic that you, know, you can do, and it's a quick little challenge. And all you have to do is post it on your Instagram story and uh, encourage others to take, um, to, and remind them to take the census. So this is a pretty cool graphic. Uh, you can download it, uh, post it on your Instagram, and start uh, your organizational social media site, right? Hopefully, um, if you guys don't have Instagram, I encourage you to, to set it up um, and, and start these challenges. Um, maybe it doesn't even have to be a person. Maybe you can challenge an organization. Like, hey, have you has the organization, um, their staff, have they taken the, the census? And you can just you know post it out like that. So there's a lot of great um, examples here. So there's a lot of uh, things that they can use. And I we will be going through our uh, digital bilingual digital toolkit uh, very quickly. It's got all of the messaging there. It's got graphics. Uh, California, uh, the state of California also, um, with a bunch of uh, partners, they com came together to develop a, a social media uh, tool, a digital toolkit um, that focuses on messaging um, that help, uh, that helps connect the co uh, COVID nineteen and census, right? And how um, you know you can that same messaging can be used as to the talking points. There are public service announcements. There is social media graphics and social media um, um, wording that you can messaging that you can use, and it's so easy. You just you know copy paste and share and you know use hashtags for sure um and i again i encourage that you if you haven't done so already do something like a, a, a facebook event or a social media event like a dance party or a virtual census rally i know that um naleo did um 
it, it was called uh, for Selena's birthday, uh, Blanca. Remember, they did the um, uh, it was like a karaoke, a karaoke, uh, census karaoke, and they just you know had people sign on during a date and time, and you know, people were able to talk census and also sing to uh, Selena music if they if they wanted to. So it was pretty cool. Uh, APL. APALA um, did a census dance party. So, you know, they had um, they had somewhat a DJ uh, playing music and also they answered um, census questions. So this is the type of, of um, events that you can you can do with your organization and, you know, just plan a date, plan a, a time and encourage partners to join you and um, to share with their um, uh, uh, with their um, uh, constituents, right, uh, their clients, and, you know, have them come together in a, a di in a digital space. Um, we have to work with what we have, and, you know, social media is a great way to, to encourage people to do that. Uh, here is a sample flyer of what that can look like. See, got the COVID-19 uh, blues. Join us uh, for a uh, virtual hangout, census and chill virtual. So this is the the graphic they they um, sent out on social media. They sent it out um, and encouraged people to join them on on um, their social media sites. So this is a great way to get people to you know get together and talk census. There's a lot of people out there who are unaware of, you know, how they can participate or, you know, if there's a deadline and if the, the um, if there is a deadline, when is the deadline? Or maybe, you know, you want to encourage people um, to, to um, participate online or by mail if they uh, prefer a different language, right? Uh, this is a, an example of a pledge. So uh, people can, um, they can do like a census day of action uh, virtual rally. And, um, oh, is it this one? So this is an event that they had. So this was a nationwide event. Um, there is one that they did similar to this, and this was a virtual pledge card. Um, I don't think it's on there. No, it's not on there. But it's, it's similar uh, to that. They did a virtual pledge card. So people would click the link and they would provide their information. So, you know, their name, a uh, phone, uh, and address, and they would it would be a, a, a census pledge card. So you would have the information to remind them by mail or remind them by phone, and just let them know like, hey, you you um, you pledged to take the census. So just wanted to remind you, the census is still going on. You can uh, participate online or by phone or by mail. Um, and one of the things that you know we've learned is that um, the paper questionnaires have been delayed a bit. So people should be um, were supposed to receive the paper questionnaire between April um, on the fourth mailing between April eighth and April sixteenth. However, uh, due to COVID nineteen, um, some of um, of these paper questionnaires have been delayed. So now they um, they are hoping to have those mailed out. I believe by April thirtieth. Am I right, Blanca? Yes, so by April 30th, um, everyone should receive a paper questionnaire. So if they haven't done so, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not going to receive one. It just means that, you know, the U.S. Census Bureau has delayed that operation and is now going to be till April 30th. So these are important little tidbits of information that you can share on social media or you can share um, with your partners to let people know, hey, if you want to participate by mail, your paper questionnaire is just a little bit delayed, but it'll it'll get there soon. And you know your the deadline has been extended to October 31st, so you have more than enough time to to participate if you if you um, if you wish to. I wanted to point out to this that it said 114 went right, so that's part of one of the analytics or one of the measurable. Um, one of the measurements that you can use, uh, for example, just real quick, um, I, if you can see here, I like that this is an example where it's using hashtags, right? It's using it's using other links that will drive traffic to your website or whatever. Vince, uh, you can um, challenge people on Facebook. So you, on any social media site, you can challenge people uh, to do 
um, to, you know, get the word out about uh, the census. And Lidiana, that is so awesome, Latino Community Foundation created the, the game of Censoteria. Uh, they recently hosted a live game event. So that is so much fun, right? Um, the Latino awesome. Community Foundation, you know, hosted that on, on their social media sites, played it on um, live, and I'm sure that, you know, it was a lot of fun for uh, people to be engaged in that, you know, uh, those, I actually have one of those Censoteria Senso games, and they are so much fun, um, so, you know, you can use that, you can use the Latino Community Foundation's um, game and host one yourself, right, and, you know, just uh, answer questions as you're playing that game about the census and how people can participate, uh, so yes, that's that's uh, a perfect example of a great event. Here in San Diego, we've actually had a lot of questions uh, as to who was doing the Censoteria. Um, the Censoteria is basically Census Loteria. For those of you who are not aware, Loteria is a, it's like a board a card a card slash board game. So yeah, it's a it's a board game for um, I think Mexican community. So um, oh, Christina is gonna bring it. So um, a lot of people from San Diego, it's, it's upside down. A lot of people from San Diego have been asking me um, about it. So it's great. And I think, I think the idea of having some sort of live event within, within the in Soteria realm is a really good idea. So yeah, like bingo. Um, yeah, so that's the in Soteria. Yeah, so see, they have great... Um, now, see, they sh they have great uh, cards and stuff. Graphics are amazing, and you know, just playing this game on uh, creating an event with with uh, something like this is is something that you can that really helps get engagement going, right? So yeah, great resource to have uh, from the Latino Community Foundation. Um, Ricardo, uh, we Ricardo Favela, uh, we did a challenge for April 1st. It went well, challenging our families. Lots of family members took the census as a result. Great, that is amazing. See, examples like that um, to challenge people, right, to participate on uh, on the 2020 census is what you need right now. You know, unfortunately, we can't do the big outreach, outreach events, you know, but we have to work with what we got and social media is a great way to reach a lot of people. Of course, you know, making sure that you know, you do um, uh, English and uh, like different languages, you know, that that uh, and do events that people are encouraged to participate in. Right. Um, so, yeah, again, the another way that you can um, encourage people to get engaged on social media is possibly getting an influencer. And a lot of people, when we say influencers, they think of like, oh, the Instagram model or they think of um, someone who's super active on social media. Um, no, an influencer can be an elected official. It can be someone um, who is well known in the community. It can be an organization that's also well known in the community. Um, so creating um, an event where you get someone who um, is very well known uh, in the community is and linking together. Uh, to talk census and to talk, um, answer those questions uh, from the uh, and get reliable information on the 2020 census is a great way, right? So reach out to local or national influencers um, to hold Facebook or Instagram live stream events that encourage the public to take part in the 2020 census. So if you know someone in your community who is well known, if you know a celebrity, if you know someone that um, would be happy to to uh, participate is that's a great way to um, to uh, encourage people to participate on the 2020 census, you know, and, and you get a lot of engagement from those. Um, our colleague Myra, she did one with um, an elected official where they were, you know, talking um, just normal conversation and they answered questions on the 2020 census. Um, and that was in uh, Facebook Live. So, you know, that is a great way to find engagement. Um, you don't have to leave um, your, at home, uh, your home. You can just use, um, you know, your digital, um, the social media, uh, Facebook Live and then link uh, each other's accounts so you can have those, those conversations and answer those questions. Um, so yeah, reach out to elected officials. Um, I'm sure that they're more than willing to um, participate in these events. And since a lot of organizations already have that reach, that's just a great way to to uh, uh, encourage others to participate. 
um, email blasts and newsletters. So if you haven't already uh, done so, uh, or your organization doesn't already have one, um, Constant Contact is a very user-friendly way to send out email blasts and newsletters. So, you know, that's a great way to um, uh, stay informed with your community and your partners. And um, it is also something that is very much needed just because a lot of things are changing. Uh, a lot of dates are changing and we just want to, you know, have people get the correct information and have them stay informed at all times. So, you know, if you can do a weekly um, email blast or, you know, um, maybe a monthly newsletter, that would be something that is, you know, really great. And you can connect a lot of organizations to, you know, chime in or maybe um, if you know of events that are going on, like social media events, uh, challenges, or um, important dates uh, from the U.S. Census Bureau, you can encourage those. Um, you can include those, sorry, um, in your email blasts and you, your newsletters and keep people informed. Um, definitely best practices, write an attention-grabbing title or subject line when you send these. Um, share resources from the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, your state, um, we, we are right now in the state of California, and they do send a lot of um, great resources and information. Uh, maybe um, share things from your local complete count committees, uh, resources from organizations such as Naleo Educational Fund, APA LA, um, Latino uh, uh, Community Foundation. A lot of these um, organizations are coming up with resources already. So you can all you have to do is you know grab those resources and share them out. Uh, maybe on your newsletter, you can talk a little bit about social media engagement and, and how people can um, challenge each other on social media to create uh, awareness and engagement uh, uh, of the census that's coming, that, that's already here, right? Um, but a lot of people, like we said, are uh, too, uh, really uh, focused on um, COVID-19 and, you know, are... Um, um, this is a way that you can remind them, hey, the census is still going on, and now we have more time to participate. Um, also, a another best practice with email blasts and newsletters, uh, keep it short and simple. Um, you know, like, don't uh, add a lot of uh, te too much text. Um, just, you know, keep it short, simple, and sweet, and uh, make sure that you test the, your, um, if you're going through constant contact, uh, make sure that you, that you test your um your email blast or newsletter before it goes out. And there's a, a feature where, that you can use there um, that can make it easy easy to test there. Okay, radio. So <clears throat> um, right now, the, you know, there's a limited amount of ways, right, that we can, again, do some census outreach. However, you if you have con contacts with media, so if you use, um, if you know someone in the radio, contact your local radio station and request if they can run a, a PSA on the census. You already will have the uh, messaging. You will have maybe the graphic. You will have uh, the public service announcement messaging, talking points. We will be sharing these with, um, uh, with on our follow-up email, but we have our digital bilingual toolkit, and we also have the um, California uh, COVID-19 Census 2020 Digital Health Toolkit, which has a lot of information on messaging that, so you don't have to recreate these. Um, you can just share them with your uh, uh, local radio stations and, and have them, you know, either call in and talk census or have them, you know, um, talk census whenever they're doing their talk shows. Um, so, you know, definitely encourage you to email people, uh, call people and let them know, hey, the census is very important. Uh, maybe this is something that you can um, share on your radio talk shows, right? Um, I've done radio uh, interviews. I just call in. Um, we talk census, and it was like about a 10, 15-minute interview. And, you know, we had uh, people uh, it, uh, people call in and ask questions. And so we, I was able to promote our 877 El Censo. Uh, a PSA is a public service announcement, so it's, you know, something that you, like, has to do like that that's helpful for the community so the census would be uh has a psa messaging that you will see uh on our uh toolkits uh, again also contacting your um local public tv station and ask uh for them to run psa messaging um on the census um 
is they you can also um, call in there and we had one of my colleagues um, call and she all they had was her headshot and she was talking on the phone um, to the TV anchor um, so that was a very interesting that they were able to and exciting that people were able to do that just send in your picture hey can we just talk census and have a, a quick segment on the 2020 census um, you know, these are unprecedented times, right, where, um, you know, like we can't leave our home, but that doesn't mean that, you know, we can't uh, do uh, census outreach, right, to those hard to count communities who really, I mean, who radio and TV is probably the, the best way that they can um, hear uh, census messaging. Uh, um, I, I want to thank you for, for commenting that to send the picture, you know, to a radio station and then, um, you know, they, they, you can, you can talk over the phone. Um, if you are an organization or a company, um, or if you're a census bureau, you know, partnership specialist or, or an, or an employee, um, this is an important, um, I guess, strategy or trick to do. Um, I know that if you have, you know, a very secure computer, you cannot share your screen, you cannot give access to your camera, etc. So for computer systems where you are not able to be on camera, um, I would recommend a strategy is that you provide a photograph um, to your host, right, where they can show a photograph of you and that way you are um, you are talking over the phone or, or the radio, etc. So I, I do want to recommend that as a, as a practice for um, for example, the Census Bureau partnership specialists who cannot use their computer, right, to join, for example, Skype meetings. Um, thank you. Yeah, and so, and radio right now, they also do a lot of Facebook Live. So, um, you know, they they not only record the, the radio, but they also have a, a big social media following. So encourage you to, if maybe you can't get a, uh, a segment on the radio, maybe you can just have them share it on their social media site. And, you know, contact in uh, language press to uh, place ads on local newspapers and magazines. Um, you know, maybe you can just do a census story and they, they'll be able to just, uh, you know, provide a free promoting through uh, through uh, an interview. Uh, but if you can, you know, they're still paid uh, advertising and you can just, you know, um, uh, pay uh, to do a quick newsletter, newspaper ad um, in local magazines and newspapers. Um, yeah, just may send local press media advisories for virtual events or information on your organization's digital campaigns to gain earned media coverage. So definitely encourage you guys to to send those emails to to the media uh, right now. Um, and also send uh, mailers, it, it, uh, send reminders in the mail to supplement the Census Bureau's mailers. So you can, you know, send out reminders that the census is coming um, uh, to encourage people to participate. Okay, next slide. These are our digital toolkits and resources. So um, please, uh, Blanca, if you could click on the Naleo Bilingual Digital Communications and Outreach Toolkit. It has social media graphics. It has social media um, talking points, I mean, uh, messaging, and there's talking points. It's got our introduction. It's got messaging and talking points, uh, communications accounts, take action, tools for partners, and additional resources. There's lots of stuff here for, um, uh, so if you ever get an interview with a radio station or a TV station, you can use these talking points um, to, to talk about census, right? Um, there's social media messaging and graphics also. Um, if you continue, it also talks about COVID-19, the COVID-19 situation. Our uh, toolkit is in English and in Spanish. So we encourage you to, um, you know, if you're going to do a post in English, go ahead and, you know, do a post in Spanish um, if, if, you, if you'd like. Um, but all of this has already been created for you. Um, all you have to do is help us share it, promote it. Um, and, you know, if people have questions, they can call our 877 El Censo hotline. Um, you can encourage people to um, click on the website um, and that takes them straight to the Census Bureau um, website for them to participate online. Um, these are all of our social media accounts. Uh, there's messaging there. There's take action uh, wording and messaging there. So lots of great resources uh, for you to to um, just grab and go, right? Uh, you don't have to think about, see, there, there's our uh, graphics. 
don't forget to wash your hands and respond to the 2020 census um, and include uh, and includes um, the online website for the U.S. Census Bureau. It includes the phone number and it also includes um, the option to participate um, online. And it's so easy to download. Everything is already there and available for you. Um, uh, so there they are. If you want to use it, you will be receiving this digital toolkit um, with your our with your follow up email. So it's exciting. So we will send this over as well via um, mm -hmm. email. And if anybody else has any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat box. Again, um, you know, we will share this. Can you talk a little bit about how you were able to obtain the Sensoteria game, uh, Christina? Do they also have like a graphic? Um, I can, so these we were, we, I received from an outreach, of, outreach event. Um, they were passing these out. Um, the Latino Community Foundation was passing these out. Um, I only have one. Uh, but I can definitely um, reach out to the Latino Community Foundation and see if they have any extra ones. Um, I see Araceli from Proteus. Hi, Araceli. Um, uh, can definitely, um, I can definitely check to see if they have any more and maybe have them sh have it shipped somewhere. Um, but yeah, so these are, uh, this is a great resource uh, for an event. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of great ideas. People, uh, the state of California, U.S. Census Bureau, you know, a lot of organizations, Naleo, um, APL, AP, sorry, APLA um, has also come up with great resources that, you know, you can use uh, to do digital marketing and use your social media sites. So here's the California uh, Primary Care Association um, with Naleo as a partner, Latino Community Foundation and other partners uh, came together to develop this toolkit. Um, it focuses definitely on um, uh, the COVID-19 and census. Um, so there's a lot of great uh, messaging, talking points, PSAs, um, scripts that you can just send out, use yourself and um, and uh, encourage people to participate online. So all of these amazing, uh, uh, resources will be sent out to you um, on our follow-up email. Also, I encourage people, if you already have social media sites um, or even on, on your newsletters or email blasts, to send out response rates. Um, this is the website on the the, what, what the last um, link at the bottom of this uh, slide uh, is uh, the Census Hard to Count Maps 2020. So if you click on that and you put in your county, you put in your address or state, you can get the response rates and you can see how many people have already responded to the 2020 census. It'll show you uh, the 2020 response rate and it'll show you the 2010 response rate. Share those. Those are changing daily. Um, so, you know, that's a, a way that you can, you know, share uh, share the response rate in your community, in your area, and let people know, hey, you know, we have this much more to go um, to reach our 2010 uh, response rate um, uh, goal. And you can make it a goal, right? And you and rally with your community uh, to uh, beat last year's, uh, la beat last census um, response rate. And you know, encourage people to continue to, res to respond. Um, please, uh, you can also get updates on um, our uh, census uh, SMS, right? Um, 9777 text census to 97779, and you will get um, uh, updates on our uh, census campaign. Um, so yeah, like those are some great resources. Uh, we will be doing a train the trainer, a virtual train the trainer Monday and Tuesday. Uh, so April 27th and the 28th, I will make sure to, um, that Blanca shares those on the follow-up email. Um, we will talk about census operations, the new dates um, that the U.S. Census Bureau is expecting to, um, to execute these operations. And it'll talk about how people can It'll walk you through the uh, paper questionnaire, and it'll also walk you through the online portal. So there's a lot of great resources that um, um, I'll make, we'll make sure to, to share on, on the train the trainer. Thank you, Christina. Our texting campaign is for rapid response. Um, that's also part of a strategy of digital marketing, right? Not precisely digital. 
um, marketing per se in that we're using, you know, a virtual site, but um, we can also use the technology of cell phones uh, to reach our community members. So also for Naleo Educational Fund, if you want to um, stay up to date on what we're doing and different trainings that we're offering, um, that is a great way for you to receive um, graphics. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I do, I do want to comment that um, I think my younger siblings and my younger family is better at Facebook than myself. Um, so I, I often just say, hey, can you help me? Can you support me in what I'm doing? You know, and they say, oh, how can I support you? You know, and then I say, can you post this graphic on your Facebook account or and tag like 10 friends, you know, or can you share this with your friends? Uh, my sister play, she was in the soccer team. She was also in the cross country team. So she has a huge network of athletes um, and coaches that she can tap to if she really wanted. So I just say, hey, can you support me? Can you please support me? You know, and often that works. Um, I think one thing that I also do with my sister and, um, and other people is that I try to be very specific. So one of the graphics, for example, that we showed, right, I try to get that graphic on my phone, either take a screenshot or copy the link, and then I'll text it to my sister specifically so that she can send it or post it. So, um, so what I want to get to that is that if we are very specific and we ask people to help us post these things, they will, right? Um, also, um, it, it can be it can be a strategy as well. Um, so with that, if there aren't any questions, again, you can always reach us at Nale Educational Fund, and we hope to see you next week. Again, just to finish off our presentation, next week we will have uh, talk a little bit more about quality engagement, um, where we will jump into more as to how to get engagement. Um, and so we will also have workshops in May, um, just so that you know, you can always use the same link to jump back on to these workshops every Thursday at 11 um, for the month of May and possibly for the month of June if we are still in this situation. Uh, so thank you very much for being here. Again, please continue to um, promote responding to my2020census.gov. And um, similarly, you know, thank you very much for being with us. Bye. Have a great Thursday.